brain injury is one of those things that everybody feels the need to classify. Um, and the terms mild and moderate severe have been with us as long as, uh, you know, certainly all of the last 50 years. And a severe brain injury is typically thought of one that involves an extended coma. And I don't have any quarrel with that definition. However, it is the distinction between um, mild brain injury, what I don't even try not to use that term except when I'm doing um, analysis like this, mild brain injury and moderate, that really there is the controversy. The problem with determining the severity of brain injury is it's done with respect to the symptoms at the beginning. What we're learning as we study athletes, what we learn subject subjectively working with individuals, it's not how severe the symptoms are on the day of the accident. It is how long term those symptoms persist. And especially this most important symptom of amnesia. Now there is good literature out there, very authoritative works that talk about amnesia and its prognosis. And I have here um, written out for me the the definition of the classification of the predictive. And of course, we never know how significant a brain injury is going to be until we're a year or two out. But the predictive aspects of amnesia with respect to permanent disability. Now, if you have amnesia of less than five minutes, it's considered to be very mild. And frankly, if you have amnesia of less than five minutes, you probably are not going to have the kind of um, injury that's going to ever get to my desk, um, ever make a phone call to my office, or probably even um, see the second doctor visit. There are significant concussions, probably as much as 80% of concussions, do not involve symptoms that persist longer than 24 hours. So if the amnesia is less than five minutes, as far as I'm concerned, it's probably not significant. But again, that's assuming somebody was checking and testing for amnesia and not confusion, because confusion and amnesia are not the same thing. If the amnesia is five to 60 minutes, it's considered mild. That could be significant amnesia, depending on the nature of it, again, if it was properly tested for. Amnesia, however, that lasts for 24 hours. Now that can be considered significant. Now we're talking about moderate amnesia, and we're talking about potentially a moderate brain injury. So moderate brain injuries typically involve a loss of consciousness, let's say more than five minutes, some, some definitions would say 20 minutes. If a person's still unconscious when the EMTs get there, that's considered clearly a moderate brain injury. If they're not, if they're woke up before they get to the hospital, they probably won't consider it to be severe. But the loss of consciousness is not the significant issue. It's how well the brain works, how well the brain functions in that period of time. And again, our most sensitive measure to how well the brain is functioning is post-traumatic amnesia. But amnesia meaning not complete loss of memory. This is not the Hollywood head injury myth of amnesia where you don't remember anything about your life until suddenly you get the second blow to the head. This is amnesia where you only remember bits and pieces. You have something called Swiss cheese memory. There'll be holes in your memory, but you're, it's completely unpredictable where those holes will be. And in terms of severity, if you have amnesia that lasts for 24 hours, you're probably going to have some problems. If you have amnesia, and again, depending on how close to total memory is and how close to total not memory it is, um, if that lasts for days and weeks, then you're all in all likely going to have a lot more disability than it appeared like you would have on the day of the accident.